as soon as you called and I hope we're not too late. No, you're not. Come on, let's go. Okay, let's, let's go, go now. now. Okay, increase it. can only lie sideways. He can't have surgery yet, since we have to get rid of the two bars on his waist. Let's leave the other one for now. Okay, got it. So far, the patient's vitals are stable. Heart rate is at 100 and blood pressure is 90 over 60. <sighs> Take the patient to the surgery room. We need to work together. Let's move quickly, okay? Get ready. Be careful, guys. Huh. Take it easy, okay? okay let's, let's go. go let's get him out of here. Come on. Easy. easy. Actually, your surgery is almost finished. We'll take you back to your room soon, okay? 
okay? Doctor, am I really okay now? You're fine now. So what happened to me just then? Grandma, you're okay now. You can go back to your room. <sighs> Punctured the left kidney and peritoneum, which caused abdominal bleeding. Diaphragm was also punctured, protruding to the prothorax wall. The bars in the left shoulder and buttocks haven't damaged any arteries or large blood vessels. Those are the injuries of the patient so far. That gives us a clearer picture. Now Lex decided how we should do this. Blood pressure's dropping. Accelerate blood recovery. The blood recovery machine has been adjusted to high speed mode. Current blood recovered, 2,500 milliliters. Blood pressure's nearly stabilized. Urology and thoracic work together. We can have the organs damaged for too long. Then orthopedics last. After that, general physicians will do the suture. Got it? Okay. Director, the suture's complete. This side, too. Nurse, how much is the total blood recovered? During the surgery, we recovered 2,400 milliliters of blood and processed 96 bottles. Good. That's five times the patient's own blood. Had we done the transfusion with such an amount of blood, his body wouldn't be able to bear it. All right, I think this procedure is a success. I believe this operation is almost complete. Thank you, everyone, for your cooperation. We just set a record after we've recovered 24,000 milliliters of blood. Thank you again for all your efforts. Thank you. Chen Zhe, help the team with the patient's suture. I'll just check ICU to check if there's an available bed. All right, director. Just leave it to us. Thanks. Tough, but we saved them. I agree. That was a tough one, right? It felt like we were all phasing off at the rate. Director Xiao, this is Chung Jun. How's my grandma's surgery coming? I just got out of surgery. What? A problem? What kind of problem is that? What happened? Grandma, uh, how are you feeling today? Are you doing okay? You're here. I'm, uh, I'm doing pretty well. <laughs> Dr. Chan, hey, uh, could I talk to you? How did the surgery go? Was it unsuccessful? Uh, actually, uh, the operation, uh, for the most part, the surgery was successful. Oh. It was successful. <sighs> Let's go outside. I, I'll tell you everything. All right. Shang Jun, is there a problem over here? <sighs> Come on, let's just all go to my office. <sighs> well, Dr. Chang, there's something that I... I want to tell you about your grandma. Mm -hmm. It's about her surgery. At first, everything about the operation proceeded smoothly, however... When we were doing the last needle, the needle got stuck, and I really have no idea why. I know you're aware that radio frequency needles get very hot. I tried to pull out the needle, but I couldn't. Then the patient... 
got burned. How did that happen? Why did that happen during my grandma's operation? Was was the focal structure complex or or something else? Well, I really have no idea, Dr. Cha. I'm so sorry for what happened. I don't know why this would even happen, and I cannot even give you any sort of explanation. But I guess it was really just an accident. You see, uh, I've done this surgery over 2,000 times, and I've never run into this incident before, theoretically. This should not even happen at all. However, it did actually happen. The needle got stuck. Perhaps it was, it was a structural problem. Of course I know that, that, that this explanation will be difficult for you, for you to accept. Uh, Director Shao. So, so what will happen to my, to my grandma's cancer? Her cancer? Well, in terms of the tumor itself, there's nothing to worry about it. The lesion was treated, but the burn will surely cause a lot of pain. I need uh -huh. more time to observe her, because it's the first time I encountered this accident, and I don't know its behavior. I still have to observe for any possible signs of infection caused by the accident, and that's why I thought about this and decided that I should tell you about it, because you deserve to know the truth. Uh -huh. I... I don't know if you can understand all of these explanations that I have, but I don't want to stretch out the truth, and that's why I am responsible for what happened. Since the patient is in pain, I already called a few specialists to come over. And tomorrow they will do a diagnosis to see if there's a better way as to how to treat this type of rare accident. Dr. Chen, I know you're a doctor here. That's why I, I decided I would tell you everything. But because I know you're also a doctor, and both of us are, I really hope that you can understand and forgive my error in explanation. I have no idea if my decision to tell you the truth will make you feel uncomfortable with me, or if you will be able to forgive me. You don't have to go on. I understand. My grandma didn't want to do this, to do this surgery in the first place. It was my father and I who were both a little worried about this. But it seemed like her attitude towards this just became a burden for you. To tell you the truth, I did feel quite pressured earlier. You know, sometimes things are kind of strange. If the patient is confident, then we feel the same thing. But if the patient or family is hesitant, that's when the time comes. The pressure gets to our nerves. That's why. Well, I, I won't deny that. That there was a degree of error. Thank you so much. Thank you for telling me this. Director Shao. Actually, a doctor. So I really understand what you're feeling right at this moment. But I also hope you understand that right now I'm not a doctor, but a patient's a patient's family member. That's why I'm just sad about this. Okay? If you have any requests, don't hesitate to contact me. I'll try my best to help you. I'll try my very best to lessen the pain that you're feeling about the situation. So, if you will excuse me, I have got to leave now. I still need to endorse my shift. Okay. You guys can go ahead. I just want to be alone for now. This has been very tough for you. I'm doing fine. It'll only hurt for a little while. <laughs> I'm fine, I'm fine. That's the problem with you. You always try to stay strong. You didn't even tell us that you were sick. <laughs> I'm fine. <laughs> oh, Chung Jun's here. Grandpa. Hey. How come you're back here again? <laughs> Grandma, mm -hmm. are you still in pain? 
I'm so sorry. I know you were scared, and you didn't want to do the surgery, but Grandpa and I still insisted that you do it. What are you talking about? Besides, it had to be done eventually. Come on, you're a doctor, right? You should know it would happen soon. In the end, the procedure was successful, right? Uh, right. In a way, the surgery was successful because the lesion was removed. Then you have nothing to worry about. Don't forget to tell the doctor. Thank you so much. You know, he seemed quite nervous. But he was so nice. <sighs> Grandma, I'm so sorry that we put you through this. It was just all because Grandpa and I, we were worried about you. That's why the doctor felt very pressured and put you in this pain. <laughs> you silly boy. I'm not in pain, huh? I don't consider this feeling pain. The good news is that the lesion is gone. And besides, all of this is hidden under my skin, so nobody can ever see it, right? You're a doctor in this hospital. I'm pretty sure they wouldn't do anything to hurt me on purpose. Don't think that way, all right? Yeah, you're right. This is just an illness. An illness is just like that. I wanted to tell you about it. However, I was afraid you might get scared. I was worried that you might back out. But Grandma, you did a great job. <laughs> it's okay now. The surgery's done. And your father, as well as everyone else, all wanted me to get better. <laughs> So stop worrying about it. Okay. I promise not to worry about it anymore. <laughs> but now that your surgery is finished, you just take things easy. And as long as you're okay, then I won't be sad. Okay? Mm. I'll do my very best. Okay? Mm. Don't worry, my child. Don't be sad. Okay. <laughs> Hi, Director Zhang. What is it? Zhang Chen, where are you now? How's your grandma doing? I'm going to the ER lobby, and my grandma's doing well. I'm here too. Please meet me up. Oh, sure. How's your grandma? She's fine, Director. Here, Cheng Chen. Eat something first. Mm. Actually, I talked to Director Shao a while ago. Well, this accident was my fault. From the beginning, I already noticed your concern about your grandma's surgery. I should have talked to you before the procedure. Director Zhang, what happened wasn't really your fault. Considering her condition, she had to do the surgery. And as for the mishaps, well, they always happen. However, I just have trouble accepting it. You know, emotionally, I still couldn't accept the fact that I wasn't there by her side when the cancer cells were found. I wasn't even there during the surgery when the accident happened. I wasn't always there when she needed me most. You think I can blame myself if I'm feeling like this? She even asked me not to be sad, yet I couldn't control it because I'm a doctor. But I couldn't do anything. I can't protect my grandma. I'm a failure. To be honest, that's what I feel bad about too. Cheng Chen, I know you're my student. You're also a doctor here. You're busy attending to other patients' families. So when something happens to your own, it's hard for you to be there. Every day, we have to explain the patient's condition to their families. But when it comes to our own relatives, it seems so useless. If we weren't so busy that time, we wouldn't feel pressured and avoided the mishap. But this is over now. There's no point in dwelling on it. Director, can I ask you something? Do you really believe that I'm a good doctor? I mean, I'm confident about every patient that were assigned to me. I know sometimes you tell me that I'm a bit talkative. Wang Bo said I'm overthinking. While Ouyang, on the other hand, looks down on me, says I'm unprofessional. Don't you really think that it's necessary for us to say something more about the patient's state and their treatments? That no matter how long we have to explain to them whatever condition they have, they should understand it, right? I think I've already done that. But why do I feel otherwise this time? Why would this kind of mishap happen to my grandma? Why couldn't everyone be more careful about her? Which is why I feel so betrayed. 
why is that when I'm on duty, I can see other patients as my own family, but I don't get why other people can't see my family as theirs. Cheng Zhen, I get your point. It's not that Director Xiao isn't being careful. But if everyone had cautiously done what they were supposed to do, this mishap would have been avoided, and we wouldn't discuss this issue among us. However, he made a mistake, and he was brave enough to admit what happened. I understand what you're feeling. Don't worry, Cheng Zhen. I'll talk to Director Xiao. I've known him for so long, and he's a really good person. I'm sure if this happened to somebody else, they probably wouldn't be honest about it. You're right. I know Director Xiao is a good doctor. And from what he told me, I can tell that it's hard on him too. I'm not mad at him. Cheng Zhen, I can say that your grandmother is an incredible woman. If she only knew how great her grandson is, she would surely feel at ease. <laughs> Just stay here for a while, and eat something, okay? If you want, you can just take some time off. You needn't worry about us. Anyway, the team did well today, because of your help. Thanks, Director. Director Zeng. Don't be scared. It has nothing to do with you. I just brought Dr. Cheng some food so he could eat. Director Zheng, is Cheng Zheng going to be okay? I told him to eat something in the office. His grandmother's surgery wasn't ideal. He's having a hard time, so I had to talk to him. Hey, did you hear that? There was a problem with the surgery. Don't twist his words. He just said it wasn't ideal. And that's far from being a problem. Uh, hey. What if we go out for a drink, and let's invite Dr. Chang? He didn't get dumped, so why should we drink? Guys, will you stop discussing that matter? We're all professional doctors here, and it doesn't sound good coming from us, understood? Understood. Anyway, guys, please organize the log for the past few days, and also some other things. Oh, shh. Hey! I heard some vital information. The chance of burn is really low in radio frequency abulations, and I also learned it was Director Shao's expertise, so how could he screw up? Hey, you will never know what will happen. Doctors are people, and not gods. All of us make mistakes sometimes. Here's an example. Everyone knows how to plug flash drives into computers, but did you know that there's a proper way to plug it? Did you know that 80% of people plug it wrongly the first time? Go on and try it. You are always full of examples. I always have been. Have you heard of that, that very famous experiment? We all know that everyone's familiar with the light switches. Turn on, turn off, on, off, every time we use it. But if you do it over and over again for 10,000 times, surely you'll do it wrong 700 times. Small errors like that are hard to avoid, and we keep on doing it. Did you know that we also make mistakes in setting the table? But these errors don't matter much, unlike in our profession where small errors can become big problems. That is the cruelty of being a doctor. In fact, it involves not just saving and treating people, but also it includes these mistakes, errors. I just said one thing, but you explained a lot of things. Of course, he's always looking for a chance to show himself off. <laughs> Dr. Oyang. Yes? We're finished now. Let's go and eat. Dr. Oyang, I'll go ahead if that's everything. All right, go ahead. Bye, Bye, Dr. Ouyang. Mm. Let's go. Dr. Shen? Hi. Hi, Dr. Shen. Ouyang. Hmm? I heard about what happened to Grandma Chang's surgery. How did you know about it? This kind of news travels fast around the hospital. Some people side with Director Xiao, some of them side with Cheng Jin, while most of them are just spectators. I was with Director Xiao. I joined him together with Nurse Lin. He tried to apologize and talk to Cheng Jun himself, but Cheng Jun didn't say anything. It's quite a relief that it happened among us. Because if it happened with a regular patient, it would be a huge problem. After I heard the news, on one hand, I felt bad for Grandma Zheng. She's already an old woman, and considering her health after what happened, I can't imagine the pain she's going through. But I'm also worried, because as doctors, we get scared too. When we're young, we're brave and not afraid of anything. But as time goes on, the more we learn things, the more scared we get. Because we know that if we make a mistake, there'll be lots of pressure on us. And we'll feel responsible and guilty. It would be too much to bear. 
I really feel bad for Cheng Jun. He's always so kind to the patients and to their families. I've always said that sometimes he rambles and meddles, but now I understand what he was doing. He was trying to prevent from feeling this kind of pain. I really think some doctors and professors are a little too cold. Yes, mistakes are unavoidable, but your attitude towards them should always be warm and pleasant. Actually, attitude can get past a lot of obstacles in life. Mm -hmm. Maybe I should change a bit. Or at least, I need to do better at that. So I don't come off as cold to everyone around me. Perhaps in that way, if I made a mistake, then the patient would be able to forgive me. Come on, don't be hard on yourself, Wu Yang. You're doing great with the patients, and that's because you're a great doctor. I know what kind of doctor I am. And I think today, Director Xiao did the right thing as well. He was honest. He was open. Mm. Even if everyone feels bad, when something like this happens... I'm going to see Cheng Jun. Are you okay with that? Don't cause any more trouble. There's already enough. I've just noticed that. Everyone isn't quite used to me being here. Even if I'm still adjusting, I know I've stolen the ER Queen's heart, so I must pay the price. If you really want to look for trouble, then go ahead. But don't mess with an ER doctor. You'll definitely regret of it. Of course, I'm aware of that. <laughs> Come in. Hi, Ching Chen. Hey. What's up? Came to see you. Oh, okay. Have a seat. I heard about your grandmother's surgery. I came here to console you. Oh, thank you. That's nice of you, but I'm doing pretty well. Cheng Zhen, everyone feels bad about what happened to you. We know how hard it must be. But if you're still working despite of what happened, I really admire you for that. Well, my grandmother's condition is already like that. No matter how sad I am, I know it's not going to get better one way or another. So what else can I do? I know quitting won't help me, and crying in the corner all day won't do anything either. <laughs> Ching Zhen, I think that you should take a few days off. Spend some time with her. Everyone will understand. You don't really have to push yourself. You know, we don't have any staff in the ER department. At any minute, there could be a patient who would be needing our help. If I'm going to take a leave, who's going to take my place? We both know that everybody's busy, right? That's right. The ER department is a high hazard area. It's exhausting and dangerous. But what if I'll sub for you a few days? What? I know that in your department, I'm still an outsider. It's quite hard for me to get involved since I'm not really part of the team. But I think if I spend a little more time, it'll help me adjust. Oh, I suppose you're overthinking. I just think that you haven't really adjusted yet, right? Hmm then perhaps it's my own problem. If you have any solutions, please let me know. A uh, solution? <laughs> well, that depends on how I feel about you. <laughs> Thanks a lot. You're welcome. That one scared the crap out of me. Steel pole sticking out of him just like lamb skewers. Hey, enough of such metaphors. What do you mean by lamb skewers? That's so rude of you to say that. Yeah, and how do you expect us to eat lamb skewers again? All right, I'm sorry. But do you really think what happened to our patient was kind of a miracle? Of course, it was a miracle. And we were actually there to see it personally. We mm -hmm. should take note of that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Listen, that's fine, <laughs> girl. Let's go. Hey, what are you doing? Whoa. Let's all go out and eat. Wrong, wrong. Let's go. Okay, let's go. Sure. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, guys, let's eat, let's eat, let's eat a lot. Don't be shy, don't be shy. All right. If you want, we'll order more. Come on, let's eat. Chao Chong, yeah? why are you buying us dinner? Who said I was? This is your treat. But why me? You should be the one to tell us what the reason is, right? right? Oh, I don't get it. Rong Rong, will you please show us your new cell phone? That's right. Mm -hmm. Here you go. See? You know... This new phone is quite expensive in the market. Tell us, where'd you get it? I... Well, 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 well. You couldn't afford such an expensive phone. Come on, who gave that? I gave it. 
Cheng Shao, <laughs> why would you buy Rong Rong this expensive phone, huh? Tell me, what's the score with you two? Rong Rong, why don't you tell them? <sighs> what's this all about? It's not illegal to give a cell phone. You're interrogating me. Actually, giving someone a cell phone is not illegal. But you two being together and not telling us about your relationship, I think that's just wrong, right? Mm. I agree with that. And you did it by us dinner. You even made us force you. How could you do that to us? Who told you that we're together? Mm. And she even won't admit it. Mm. Xiao Chan saw you the other day. If you weren't together, why would Cheng Shang buy you that expensive phone and not me? Come on, don't deny it now. I agree. And without having second thoughts, you accepted the phone. So that means you also like him. But Liu Changsheng, I never really thought that. You were such a big spender. <laughs> Changsheng, isn't that phone a little expensive to buy and you couldn't afford one with your salary? Is your family rich yeah, or what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tell us. What does your family do? Uh, why are you interrogating him? Changsheng, you don't have to tell him a thing. My family's not rich. We live by planting trees. I already told if you that's that. that's the case, then how many acres of land does your family have? <laughs> acres? I've never really counted it, but we've got four mountains. <laughs> what? Changsheng's family has four mountains? Four mountains? Well, that's really kind of big and hard to grasp. Anyway, how much money do these mountains make you a year then? Around four or five million. <laughs> then how much is your monthly allowance? Actually, my mom gave me a card, which she puts money into each month. She told me she didn't want our family to look poor. Sometimes 10,000, sometimes 100. I can't spend that much myself. I guess there's about a million now. Wow, oh my goodness, goodness, a million, million, million now? And you're telling us that you're not rich? Wrong, wrong. You just hit the jackpot. Oh my goodness. Hey, why can't I find someone like him? And come to think about your life after marriage. You can already buy a house and a couple of cars. You can also travel around the world, if not, then to the moon. Mm-hmm. And you won't even have to be a nurse anymore. So then, why do you still want to be a nurse even if your family's already rich? <sighs> because since I'm still young, I should do my own thing for a while. Besides, it was my parents who worked hard for that money, and I didn't do anything. Anyway, I really like working as a nurse. I know it doesn't seem like much, but I get to help people. Every time patients leave and they come to thank me, it feels so gratifying. And like my dad said, that helping people, when they need it the most, will bring us back good karma. Oh my goodness, Chang Shang. We always thought you were just a simple and humble guy, and we never knew you could talk like that. I was really surprised. To be honest, I must admit that you're so much better than me. You're such an amazing guy. If you want to do this job, then it's not going to be a problem because you just need to buy your own hospital. I know, right? <laughs> when we graduate, we'll just work there as doctors. If that really happens, I'll do obstetrics. She'll do ophthalmology, then Xiao Chang. I'll be in the ER. And I guess I'll just take Director Zheng's position. <laughs> <laughs> so you're saying you don't want to be a writer anymore? Of course not. But I can't let such a great opportunity pass up. Hey, hey, hey. Don't get ahead of yourselves yet. Since I haven't agreed yet, okay? Then what are you waiting for? Go ahead and answer him so you can become the Mountain Regardless Queen. Regardless of how much money he already has in his bank account, he's also nice to you, right? Mm -hmm. Both rich and nice. And such a good-looking human being. What are you still waiting for, Rong Rong? Well... I wanted someone taller than me. Haven't you heard the smartest people are the smallest ones? Look at these two, then look at me. Hey! See? <laughs> Shut up! But if both of us were going to have a kid someday, then... Hey, hey, hey! She's talking about her child someday, right? I'm pretty sure your child will be tall like you. There's a medical study which states that the child's height mostly depends on that of the mother's and not of the father's. Since you're tall, your mm -hmm. kid will be tall. Really? Stop hesitating and agree with us, okay? You're great for each other since you're both nurses. At home you can watch, watch over each other. Like twin lighthouses, or like twin watchtowers, or uh... Yeah, right, whatever. Come on, just say it now. <laughs> um... Say it, Liu Changsheng. Say you'll watch over her. But I already said it. Then say it again. <laughs> Guys, stop messing around. Say it again? Uh, okay. <laughs> Actually... <laughs> I wanted to give this to her a few days from now, but since you insisted... Hey! Oh, it's actually a watch! <laughs> <laughs> Chang Sheng, I didn't expect that you are such a genius guy. Look, it's actually a metaphor. Wrong. Chang Sheng's already said it, so now it's your turn. Wrong, 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 wrong. Does that mean you agree? Yes! Yeah! 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 Yeah!
Dr. Zhang, this is the patient from yesterday. We brought him here after his surgery, and his condition's stable now. His vitals are all back to normal. So are his urine, hemoglobin, blood pressure, and blood oxygen levels. We can remove the tubes. How are you? You've got some crazy luck. Hey, son, please settle down. Please don't cry. You see, you've successfully made it through surgery. So you should be happy, okay? Come on, put a smile on your face. Sue's condition is finally stabilized, and all his vitals are normal. We can send him home now. I think we should just give him some urine bags. That'll be great. Actually, it costs quite a lot here, so you should get going. Anyway, who will take Sue and his mother home? Let me do it. I know their situation. We can leave later, after I switch shifts. Aside from that, I'll show them how to use the bags. I just want to say thank you all so much, doctors. Ciao, Sue. You're going home now. I'm sure you must be happy. <laughs> Zhao Chong, please go and assess Director Ma. Understood? Sure, no problem. Director, I'll go too. You? I want to get to know them. Uh, okay. Oh. Ouyang. Yes? What are you doing here? I'm getting colostomy bags, annular tubes, gauze, alcohol swabs, because I'm going to join them and take Chao Shu home. You're going too? Yes, why not? But why would you join them and do that? You just finished an overnight shift, and you still got another one tonight. I'll just sleep later. Director Ma's really busy now, and I want to know Sue's family, so in the future, I can help them better. What's wrong? You don't believe me? Uh, of course I do. Why wouldn't I believe a doctor? Uh, wait a second. I'll just get some more gauze for okay. you. Okay. One more. Head Nurse Lin, why do I feel like you have something against me? Uh, I don't know. I... I just really think that you're being too cold to all of our patients here. But you're a doctor, and different from us nurses. There's no difference. I really think that you're right. That I am being too cold to all of our patients here. And I... I'm gonna change that. <laughs> Come on, don't say that. Oh, yeah, we know that you're a good person. <laughs> you and Shen King Xuan are together? Yes. Why do you ask? <sighs> well, it's nothing. I just think that you chose the wrong one. I think Chung Jin's better for you. My mom said that too. <laughs> I've been working here half my life, and I know how to read people. Dr. Shen's a good man, not to mention how skilled he is, but he seems so cold to me, and I think. You two won't last long. Head Nurse Lin, if you know people so well, how come you've always been single? I guess I said too much. Well, I have to get going now. I'm sorry. It's all right. <laughs> 